Howdy neighbors, friendly neighborhood AP calculus teacher. Back again, this time AP exam review. Topic three, graphical analysis. For topic three, graphical analysis, tons of justification. All of that stuff we talked about with extrema, the sign change in the first derivative, the second derivative test, a critical value, I'm not sorry, not a critical value. A slope of zero with a positive or negative second derivative indicating concavity and a relative minimum or maximum respectively. Relative or absolute extrema. Increasing and decreasing functions, points of inflection, horizontal tangents, the derivative test already mentioned. All of these things can happen here. Plus, you could have some geometric shape questions, right? This thing right here looks exactly like geometric shape action. Fundamental theorem of calculus. I'm done. I'm not talking about any more of these concepts, but what I will say is that topic three is approximately, depending on the year, about 18% of your overall score. So there's gonna be multiple choice questions and free response questions if not one entire one, then certainly multiple parts on multiple questions, regardless. Question and a set of topics that comes up a lot. Here's your question for today, this non-calculator, enjoy. I will next go over my work. And then as always, scoring guidelines. So continuing with my work, here's part A. In part A, you are asked to find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals pi. f is the equation. So I need to know the quotient shortcut, the exponential base e shortcut, and the chain rule twice. I did all of that. I got negative one. Part B and part C are very similar. They just have different functions. In part B, we want to find k prime of pi. In part C, we want to find m prime of two. In part B, we need to use the chain rule. It gives us h prime of f times f prime. We evaluate it pi, so we need f of pi and f prime of pi. f is the equation, cosine of two x, e sine, of e to the power of sine of x. You can see I did that calculation down here. That's how we got a two for f of pi. Negative one, I calculated in part a. So negative one third times negative one is one third. Oh, but where did the negative one third come from? The negative one third came from doing the graph of h, find h prime at two. So two is right here. I need h prime. The compre or the concept of the derivative we're using here is the slope. So it's a line goes from this point to this point, which is down one, right three. That's the slope of negative one third. That's how I knew negative one third for h prime of two. You don't have to organize it perfectly like I did, but you do need to have correct notation throughout. Part C, we find m prime of two, which means we need m prime of x, which means we need the product and chain rules. I took the derivative of g of negative two x first. That's g prime of negative two x times the derivative of negative two x times h of x plus product rule, derivative of h is h prime. So negative two times two, that's where the negative four comes from. So I need g prime of negative four negative two times h of two, g of negative four, h prime of two. h prime of two, we did in the last one, it's negative one third, g of negative four comes from the table, h of two, a little bit tricky, but I know it has to be negative two thirds because I've gone 
down one, right one, I'm sorry, down one, right three, but if I only go one unit, that means I've gone right one, which means I've only gone down a third of that. And then G prime of negative four, also from the table. Okay, multiply, simplify, get negative three, done and done. Part D, is there a number C in the closed interval negative five, negative three? I won't guarantee, but I will say that a phrase like, is there this, does this thing exist? Often indicates you're gonna be using one of our favorite theorem friends. In this case, the mean value theorem. How did I know the mean value theorem? Because it's the G prime of, or I'm sorry, the G prime of C, which means I'm talking about the derivative of G, which means I would like G to be differentiable. And also I gave it some thought. So I could have tried the intermediate value theorem. And some of you may have tried the intermediate value theorem, but the intermediate value theorem is inconclusive for the interval negative five to negative three. Why is it inconclusive? Because from negative five to negative three, you go from negative three to four. And negative four is not on that interval. So you might be tempted to say the intermediate value theorem concludes that there is no such value. That is phony baloney, not true. The intermediate value theorem applies when a function is continuous, but it can have an inconclusive result. It'll have a conclusive result if the output of the function is between those, but the output of the function is not. That's how I knew I was going to use the mean value theorem. So I talked about how G is differentiable which means G is continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. So the mean value theorem applies for at least one value C on the open interval, negative five, negative three. That was worth one point. You also got one point here for showing that G of negative three minus G of negative five divided by negative three minus negative five, the average rate of change for G is negative four. Scoring guidelines time. You get two points for the correct value negative one, but you get no points if you don't have a correct derivative. Make sure they're labeled. Part B, interesting that it scored differently. I would love to know why. I don't. K prime of X, and then the value one third with correct notation indicating what's what. Letter C, two points for M prime of X. I don't know for sure, but I think it's possible. You'll get partial credit here if you do either the product rule or the chain rule. So I think, I suspect if you do the product rule, you would get one point out of three. If you do the chain rule, you get one point out of three. You have to do both to get M prime. And then you have to do the arithmetic, including grabbing all of these values to get negative three until you get your third point. For part D, Two points, one point for using this average rate of change difference quotient, and then one point for justification with the mean value theorem. I'm talking about how the function is continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval. So the mean value theorem applies, which means there are at least one C value on the open interval, negative five, negative three, such that G prime of C equals negative four. Thanks for watching. See ya next time. Take care.